And with that, we welcome you in to NFL Live. Glad you are here with us. Trey Wingo, the Commander-in-Chief. Bill Polian is here. They're trying to confuse me this late in the season. <laughs> Damian Woody and Darren Woodson. Got it straight. So, you know, they're trying. They're trying. Let's get to into this as begin with the teams beginning. They're planning for the penultimate weekend of the regular season, and we start in Green Bay because Aaron Rodgers' season is now over. A lot of people thought he might be done, and now it's official. The Packers placing their quarterback on season-ending injured reserve on Tuesday. This after the Falcons' win on Monday eliminated Green Bay from playoff contention, and their eight-year playoff run, longest in team history, is over. For more on this, let's bring in ESPN insider extraordinaire Adam Schefter. Adam, how did the Packers arrive at this decision once they knew they were out of the playoffs? Well, Trey, the first person to raise this possibility was Aaron Rodgers <clears throat> after the game on Sunday night saying that maybe it might be a wise idea to shut him down. And the truth of the matter is, once Atlanta beat Tampa Bay on Monday night, that officially eliminated the Green Bay Packers from playoff contention, which means there was no real reason to subject their franchise quarterback coming off the injury that he did to additional punishment against a tough Vikings defense. Even when Mike McCarthy... The Packers head coach stepped to the podium on Monday. He alluded to the fact that Aaron Rodgers took too many hits on Sunday and was very sore on Monday. Altogether, the posing the risk of the Vikings defense, how he was handled on Sunday, his feeling, and then being eliminated all contributed to making this a simple decision. Aaron Rodgers to IR, his season tray is over. Adam, thanks. We'll get back with you a little bit later. Your season on this show is not over. Uh, first and foremost, right move? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> we talked about it yesterday on the show. There's absolutely nothing to gain for the Packers by playing Aaron Rodgers. There's a lot to lose because he's, he's number one, sore, and two, there's still a risk of re-injury to the uh, a collarbone. And number three, they need to see Hundley against top-flight talent with something to play for. Right. That's the upside for the, the, the Packers. See Hundley under fire and give him more time to mature and develop to see if he's the answer for the future. Well, that is the important question uh, for the future because, you know, when when Rodgers first went down, all these people were like, get Tony Romo, do this, do that. Mike McCarthy said, no, we've invested three years in this guy, in Brett Hundley. We need to see what he is. The question then becomes for everybody else in the locker room. Look, you play to win the game, and you play because the eye in the sky is telling you right. every play that everybody's out there is going to be scrutinized on. But is it a harder sell to the locker room now, Damian, that, look, well, we have nothing to play for, so let's not injure this guy, but you guys go out there. No, because I think every player in the National Football League knows that not everyone is on, the same, is on equal footing. And when you're talking about a franchise guy and Aaron Rodgers, I think most, guy, most players understand that I'm not on the same plane as Aaron Rodgers here. Uh, so I, I think it, it, guys understand that. Now, where it could get funny is, you know, incentives. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you're talking yeah. money on the line, then guys are like, boy, I wish he was out there to help yeah. me get those incentives in my contract. Yeah, I, that's it. I mean, I think players even more so today understand that they're an asset. And the number one asset with the, with the Green Bay Packers is uh, Aaron Rodgers. And they have to protect that asset. But at the same time, if you're in that locker room, you know every time you walk on the practice field that the eye in the sky is watching you. Every time you get on the football field in the game time situation, there's 31 other teams that are watching you, and you have to put out a good performance and put out a good product every time you touch that field. So I don't think it's going to be a problem. Listen, they understand the season's over with, but for the players, they're going to play as hard as they possibly can. And I, and I believe that Tony Romo had a situation where he injured his collarbone, came back, and injured it again. 2015. And I don't think this is a situation where you want to put Aaron Rodgers in, where he, he's all of a sudden he's playing in many you know, games that have no meaning. And then for some, you know, for some reason, he goes out there and injures himself again. That just wouldn't be prudent or smart by the Green Bay Packers. Okay, so then there's a larger issue for the team in general. He just completed his 13th season with the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, he's one of the best at what he does. He's been an MVP. He's won a Super Bowl. He's done all those things. But he's played 13 seasons. Not everybody is going to be in their 40s playing mm -hmm. like Tom Brady is. Mm -hmm. You have to look realistically peak three more years maybe at Aaron Rodgers at his finest. If you go by what history tells us, how does this team get better around him to give them another chance to get to another Super Bowl and win it? Well, right now they're pretty good, actually. Uh, their problem this year has been injury, and right. the most notable one to him. But defensively, they're pretty good. They had uh, some injuries in the secondary, which really hurt them. But if this team comes back intact 
with their key players next year, they should they should really be a contender because they've got good people. They manufacture running backs, and they did again in, in Jones this year. And Jamal Williams. And, and Jamal Williams. So that's not a problem. Uh, this is a this is a darn good team that's been beset by injuries. I think they're in position to make a good run next year. I look at the balance. I mean, I look at this team, and you're you're right. Personnel wise, they're always going to be one of the top personnel teams in, in the league. And and. They've, been, they've gone through a lot of injuries, like you said, in the last couple of years. But I look at this football team and I say the best thing that probably happened is that they established a running game at the end of this season. And they have to stay balanced in that. They can't get away just because they get Aaron Rodgers back next year. They can't just go off and, hey, you carry us, you know, through 16 games. They have to find a running game to stay balanced and change the mentality of what they do on, on a day to day basis. One just, of the reasons, excuse me, one of the reasons their defense has faltered in, in past years is because not enough reliance right. on the right. running game. That's right. Defense on the field too much. And it just seems like every time we talk about the Green Bay Packers, we talk about injuries. Yeah. It seems like every single right. year they have key guys that are injured that I believe hinders them from getting over the top. Because anytime you have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, you're going to be in it. But they just, man, it just seems like we're always talking about Green Bay with injuries to especially – uh, key defensive guys yeah. that prevents them from making you know making the plays to to get them over. But to that point, they have been all about Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, he led the NFL with 40 touchdown passes last season. One of you, one of only four players in NFL history with multiple put touchdown passes of 40 yards. You can pretty much guess the other three: Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, and Dan Marino. All right, they were supposed to, and uh, he was supposed to start, but the Packers will play the Vikings uh, this week. For that and what's going on from their side with this news, we welcome in Vikings reporter Courtney Cronin. Vikes have already clinched the NFC North, Courtney, and the push is on to lock up a first-round bye. How does the Rodgers move to IR impact what Minnesota is planning for this uh, Sunday? Well, Trey, I spoke with Kyle Rudolph earlier this morning, and he said that there was really no surprise from his end that Rodgers wasn't going to play at this point with the Packers' season all but lost in terms of the playoffs. He said, you know, why would they risk putting a Hall of Famer who might not be 100% at a chance for any more injury? So the Vikings went into this week expecting two quarterbacks, and that's how they prepare. So they know they'll face Brett Hundley in week 16. But it's going to be a very tense game is what many are expecting there at Lambeau Field. Primetime on Saturday night. I asked Stephon Diggs earlier in the locker room whether they're worried about any sort of retaliation any sort of tense environment regarding the anthony Barr hit as you'll remember in week six ten weeks ago Barr hit Aaron rogers and thus broke his collarbone dig said that he's never seen this type of level of hate in this rivalry before. Obviously, what he means by that is between the fans. He expects that they won't become physical on the field or any sort of retribution that way, that these are adults. They're grown men playing football, and that nobody should have to fear for their safety in this game, and he doesn't expect that it'll come to that. All right, Courtney, thanks. Minnesota, a really balanced team, one of only three teams ranked in the top ten, both offensively and defensively when it comes to efficiency alongside the Eagles and the Rams. Watches through a pick. Interception for Marshawn Lattimore. It is intercepted. Chris Banjo. And it bounces off Hooper's chest. It's going to be Robin intercepted. Robin Marcus Robin Williams. Williams. Third interception for Ryan in his many possessions. Video, you can get a joke side. Redo that. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Thank you. This is for the lead now. Try by Bryant is away, and it is good. Bree shoots it. In zone intercepted. Dion Jones. The ball is right there. I just really wanted to make a play on the ball. Well, they met just a couple of weeks ago, and they are meeting again. Big game between the Falcons and Saints in New Orleans. We're joined now by our Saints reporter, Mike Triplett. Uh, Mike, let's start with Alvin Kamara. Suffered that concussion early in the first quarter of that meeting a few weeks ago. With him good to go, especially for the Saints, how different will this game be? Well, it makes a huge difference. I think Alvin Kamara is at least one of the main reasons why the Saints have the number one offense in the NFL this year. He and Mark Ingram both on pace for more than 1,500 yards from scrimmage. That's never been done in NFL history by two running backs before. Kamara is tied for second in the NFL with 12 touchdowns this year. And, yeah, he got knocked out on the opening drive against the Falcons with a concussion, didn't play the rest of that game. The Saints only scored 17 points. I think it's pretty obvious 
that they're a lot harder to defend with him on the field. No question, Mike. Thanks very much, and we'll see what happens going forward. So Wednesday marked the day that these day teams are just beginning to plot and build their respective game plans. So it's a game day game plan. And let's start right here uh, with the Saints and the Falcons. And again, talking about the running backs, again, uh, of the Pro Bowl vote, which we'll get into later, Ingram and Kamara, first of teammates to be back to back, go to the running uh, Pro Bowl for the same position, same team since 1970. So that's how rare it's what we're seeing. Damien, what's the one thing you want to watch for when you see the Saints? Russian attack. <clears throat> and, and just we talked about Alvin Kamara being <clears throat> out. This guy is so unique, as, not only as a runner, but in the passing game. I mean, this is a guy you can line up out wide. He's gone against cornerbacks and, and, and run routes like a wide receiver. That is very hard to defend defensively because you don't know how to match up when you have this guy, Alvin Kamara, on the field. So with him being out early in, in the, the last time the Atlanta Falcons played against him, I, don't, I think this game will be totally different as far as their balance that New Orleans Saints will have in this game. Yeah, we saw Kamara come back uh, last week. Had He's just impossible to tackle. Had a touchdown, mm -hmm. had some big runs. He yeah. really changes everything for them and gives them a one-two punch. Uh, Darren, for the Falcons, what do you want to see? It's got to be Matt Ryan. That's where it starts. <clears throat> and we've been watching him uh, that's this year. This guy's coming off the MVP season. This year he hasn't been accurate with the football, especially in the crossing routes, the underneath routes. He's been off. He's going to have to be accurate this week. And his receivers are going to have to create some separation. We, you talk about Julio Jones and Muhammad Sanu. There's going to be some mismatches on the outside that he's going to take advantage of, but it starts with the guy at the, at the quarterback position, and that's Matt Ryan. And he seemed a little off in the Monday night game uh, against the Bucs. They had a big game from Devontae Freeman. He, they literally ran past the Bucs, and, of course, the Bucs missed that 54-yard field goal uh, to tie it at the end of regulation. So what do you think this game is going to come down to, Bill, when push comes to shove? I think it's, it's basically three things. Number one, can New Orleans run? Uh, if, if Atlanta's going to win this game, they have to stop the run. They, they can't allow the kind of rushing yardage that, that the uh, uh, Saints have been putting up. Number two, turnovers on Atlanta offense. You can't turn the ball over. Right. You can't give Drew Brees and company extra times at bat. It's a sure way to lose. And then number three, uh, from the Saints' perspective, they have to make the big plays when they're there. Mm. You're probably not going to get – people are going to sell out to stop the run, so you're probably not going to get big plays, chunk plays in the running game. When you get big chunk plays, Willie Sneed, et cetera, in the passing game, Thomas, you got to make them. Listen, it's interesting. This has been a very unusual year for the Falcons, but they're in the same position they were a year ago. Uh, they won out. They were 7-5. and five. They won out and win the NFC South. And right now they're a game behind both the Saints and the Panthers, but they play them both. So if they win out one more time mm -hmm. and finish at 11-5, and five, they will be NFC South champs for a second straight year. We told you it's an all-32 day here on NFL.